Hello, biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four, blood donations and transfusions. So this is the last lesson specifically about blood. And we're going to start off by talking about blood donations and key point one, the donation process. Uh, the first couple of slides are um, not going to be required as notes. They're not going to be, I'm not going to test you on them. Uh, but you can write them down if you want. Uh, it's just kind of some information for you as you're almost at the age or you might be at the age where you can start donating blood. So I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, you can check out th these videos before or after if you want to see uh, the process, but essentially it saves lives and this is the procedure. And then uh, blood, uh, the Canadian Blood Services has a FAQ here, uh, Frequently Asked Questions. So you can check that out if you like. Um, so again, this isn't notes, you don't have to write this down, but if you spend one hour every 56 days, uh, you can save three lives. And you can save three lives because remember, you can spin that blood and make it into three parts, the plasma, the white blood cells, and the platelets, and the red blood cells. So if you do this six times a year, uh, over 54 years, if you live to 71, you start at your 17, um, 54 times 6 is 324 donations, times 3 lives per donation is 972 lives saved in your lifetime. That is quite cool. Um, they have a challenge, I'm not sure um, what kind of marketing they're doing on this anymore, but they had a challenge, 25 by 25. You make three donations a year over eight years from when you're 17 to 25 and one extra one you can donate blood 25 times by the time you're 25 and save up to 75 lives so just some interesting stats i believe you can still donate blood if you're older than 71 years it's just an age to stop to give you 54 total years of donating blood so the process uh you must be between 17 and 61 for first time donors. So if you've given blood before that, you can continue on as long as you need or want. Uh, you have to be at least 110 pounds. You have to be in good health. You have to be feeling well, all this good stuff. Uh, you, you know, you can't be sick. Uh, as far as frequency of the donation, the minimum interval is 56 days. Uh, but depending on what your doctor says, you may need to wait longer. Again, this is not notes, but just for interest. Uh, if you have donated blood, um, Sorry, if you've done any of these things, you must wait before donating. So if you had dental treatment, like uh, an extraction or a filling, uh, you have to wait 72 hours. Um, if there's any kind of surgery, you have to wait 72 hours uh, so they know that you're not, you don't have any infections. Uh, you have to have a full recovery from a cold because you don't want to be giving that to somebody. Uh, and if you've had an ear or body piercing or a tattoo, there's lots of time to get infections there. So it has to be at least six months from then there are lots of other restrictions some good some not so good uh, so if you check out their FAQ they'll give you more information on that um, but essentially if you want to donate uh, here's step one you register uh, and you bring your ID at the when you get there you screen so they do a few tests on you they ask you a bunch of questions that are very very strange uh, they do it in a private interview with a screening nurse, so no one else hears you answer these very strange questions. Uh, some of them are very normal, but there are a couple of different ones. Uh, there is the donating and disinfecting portion, so they disinfect your arm and they put a rather large needle in and they draw a lot of blood uh, from your arm. And then there's the recovery, which is my favorite area because they always have cookies and juice boxes and all that good stuff. Um, so you definitely stay there for a while and you can meet people. It's kind of interesting to see who all has donated blood in that last little bit. Here we go. This is the part that we're now going to start focusing on. So we are going to talk about number two, compatibility. Who can donate to who? So the key is that we can only donate blood to people who do not have antibodies to our blood's antigens. So if someone with blood type uh, a, they have A antigens, and some type, uh, someone with blood type B has A antibodies. So these antibodies, if blood type A was to enter someone with blood type B, would uh, immediately alert the system and coagulate the blood or clump the blood. So A is not compatible to give to someone with type B because it has A antibodies in it. 
So it's very important that we can think of it in steps. What are the antigens? What are the antibodies? And how do these things interact? So um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause it and I'd like you to um, make your way through here. Uh, this obviously does not have RH positive in it, but that adds another layer. Uh, and I guess I can see that the top is not exactly perfect over the grid, but as you can see, there's four on top. There are four members of the grid. Uh, when I go to the next slide, it will show you the answers to this, but I want you to fill it out and I'll do a, a one with you here. So let's do, let's do B. So that's this column here. B has the antigen B. It has the antibody that is not on it, which would be A, which means that blood type B can donate to anyone who doesn't have A antibodies. So uh, blood type B would be able to donate to blood type B. Um, blood type A has A anti has B antibodies, so that doesn't work. Blood type O has B antibodies, so that doesn't work. But blood type AB, they don't have B antibodies, and I know that because they have B antigens. So uh, blood type B can donate to blood type B and AB. Blood type B would be able to receive from anyone who doesn't have B antigens on their uh, erythrocytes. Um, the, they have A uh, antibodies, so A antigens cannot come in. So blood type B would be able to be received and blood type O would be able to re be received because there are no antigens on it at all. AB could not be received because it would have blood, uh, blood antigens A on it and that would be incompatible with the antibodies in the blood type B. So I know it's a little bit confusing. If you have questions about it, uh, please let me know. Uh, you can pause, stop me in class or send me an email. I'm going to flip to the next slide and it will show you the uh, answers and we'll go through another one. So as you can see, uh, this is what we said it was. Uh, but let's go to AB here. We have type AB. It has A and B antigens with no antibodies. Um, so that means that it can only donate to um, other people who have no antibodies. So that's only AB who have no antibodies. So AB can only donate to AB, but because AB has no antigens, or sorry, no antibodies, it has no detection uh, system, it has only antigens, uh, anybody can donate to it. AB, AB, or O can all donate to blood type AB. There are no antibodies to detect anything. So it's what we call the universal recipient. That is uh, key point three. Uh, blood type O has no antigens, but has a bunch of antibodies. Um, so it can donate to anyone because it doesn't have any antigens on it to be detected. It is like a stealth red blood cell. Uh, the only people it can receive from though are O because it is full of antibodies. It can connect, uh, it can, um, sorry, detect A, B, and AB blood types because it has these antibodies, but it cannot be detected because it has no antigens. Uh, we then add the RH factor into it. So if it has the RH factor uh, on the antigen, it does not have the antibody. Uh, so we always need to add that as an extra layer. So negative can donate to negative, negative can donate to positive. So negative is a kind of a universal donor in terms of RHs and positive can donate to positive, but positive cannot donate to negative because there are antigens on the positive that are corresponding to the antibodies that would be in the negative blood. So universal donors. People with blood type O negative are called universal donors since their blood has no A, B, or a RH antigens. So it is completely silent. You can see it here, it is stealthy, nothing on it at all. Uh, it can be donated to people of all blood types. Since type O blood has no antigens, no, the antibodies that may be present in the recipient's blood will not be able to cause any clumping. No matter what antibodies the recipient has, nothing can detect it because it has no antigens. So that it is completely safe to be given. There will be no clumping. Universal recipients are people with the blood type AB, and they're called this because their blood uh, has no antibodies. Since this blood has both A, B, and RH antigens, it will have no antibodies at all. Therefore, the red blood cells of any blood type will not be agglutinated or coagulated or clumped, 
when transfused into AB blood. Essentially, AB positive blood has no warning system. It has all the antigens, but none of the antibodies. So it is not able to detect uh, foreign invading blood, which makes it a universal recipient and very handy. So again, universal donor is O negative. There's nothing on the, there are no antigens on the red blood cell. And universal recipients have no antibodies in the plasma. That's type AB positive. Um, determine, so what you're going to do, or what we're going to do with these case studies that come up here, we are going to determine which antigens are in the donator's blood, and we are going to determine which antibodies are in the receiver's blood, and find out if it is able to work, or which ones work. So we have case study one. We have Greg, 17, car crash, suffered injury to his right leg and is booked for surgery. Greg's blood group is type AB positive, who can do give blood to Greg. So AB positive has all the antigens and no antibodies, so that means anybody can give to Greg. He is the universal recipient. So all blood types can give to Greg. Case two, Benjamin is a three month old who was born with a major heart defect. Uh, he requires surgery to live past his first, birth first birthday. Uh, Benjamin's blood group is type B negative. Who can give blood to Benjamin? So type B negative, that means it has B antigens on the red blood cell, and uh, he, that means Benjamin has A and RH uh, antibodies. So that means uh, the only people that would be able to donate to Benjamin would be uh, O negative, because it is without RH antigens, or B negative, because it is also without the RH antigens or the A antigens. Sarah is a five-year-old leukemia patient. She visits the hospital regularly to get blood transfusions that she needs to continue fighting her disease. She is A positive. Who can donate to Sarah? So Sarah has A and RH antigens, so she has B type antibodies, which means that B type blood cannot be donated. So A blood can be donated, O blood can be donated, but uh, both positive and negative for those, but not any B positive or negative or uh, AB positive or negative because it has the, she has the B antibody to detect that. We have this happy man, Bill, 50 year old father of three teenage children. He's booked for heart surgery. It's two of the arteries of his heart are blocked. He is type O negative who can donate to Bill. So O negative has no antigens on the red blood cell. Therefore, it has uh, all of the antibodies. So it can detect any uh, different type of blood except for O negative. So only O negative people can donate to Bill. Bill is the universal donor, but that means that he can only receive from other O negative people. John, 60 year old man, who's just been admitted to the emergency department. He's vomiting large amounts of blood. He's had two stomach ulcers. The physicians order blood right away for this man. His blood type is unknown. What blood group will this man receive? So he doesn't know his blood type. So we are automatically going to give him the universal donor, O negative. We need to give him the universal donor because we do not want any chance of compatibility issues. O negative can be donated to anyone safely. So it is in the highest demand, especially in emergency rooms and emergency situations. This is the type of blood that would ride around in an ambulance or in the emergency or urgent care department um, because we don't have time often to find out what blood type they are or if you ask them, they don't always know or they don't always tell you reliably. Oops, our last case study is this friendly guy, Sam, 20 year old man who was shot in the lower abdomen by accident, by accident. The hospital didn't know his blood type, so he used uh, he received three units of O negative blood in emergency. He's now booked for surgery, but we know that Sam's blood type is AB negative. Who can give blood to Sam? So type AB negative would have A and B antigens, therefore only RH antibodies. So if it has RH antibodies, only uh, RH positive uh, types of blood would be incompatible with Sam. So that means A positive would be okay, B positive would be okay. Um, sorry, 
just negative versions. So A negative, B negative, AB negative, or O negative. Anything without the Rh antigen would be able to get to Sam. So all of the negative versions of the blood types. What I'd like you to do is two things here. There's the blood type review worksheet and the chart to kind of check off and put X's through who is compatible and who is not. It makes it very easy to look at to see uh, who is a universal donor and recipient and who is close. But if you guys have any questions, again, please let me know. I believe there's a quiz next. Uh, that's all there is for the blood um, part of the unit. We'll be going on to the heart next, which is quite complex, but I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.